are nine things you need to know about Florida's wildlife before you move here. My name is Alexandra Shoup, and I'm a local realtor down on Florida's Space Coast. If you want to keep seeing videos about what it's like living on Florida's East Coast, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell so that you're notified every Friday morning when I post a new video. I have people calling me every day and I really enjoy it. So if you have any questions about Florida's wildlife or what it would be like if you lived here, go ahead and give me a call, shoot me a text message, or send me an email. I've got your answers and I would love to hear from you. All right, let's get into it. Number one, some animals that you may be used to seeing as pets live in the wild here. If you see a green parrot in your yard or an iguana dash across the road, have no fear, no one's pet has gone missing. Iguanas aren't as common here in Brevard County as they are just a little bit south of us, but we still see them. And fun fact, when it gets a little bit too cold, they cannot move and they end up falling out of trees, causing a potential hazard. Number two, love bugs. If you've ever driven on one of Florida's highways during love bug season, you know there's absolutely no escaping the swarms of love bugs. We get them about two times a year, once in the spring and once in late summer to early fall. Love bugs are a nuisance, but they're completely harmless to you and your pets. However, they are not harmless to your vehicles. If you did not wax your car before love bug season to prevent them from sticking to your vehicle, it's important to wash them off as soon as possible because the sun turns their remains highly acidic and that can damage your car's paint job. One super easy way to remove them from your vehicle is to wet a dryer sheet and just wipe them off. Number three, gopher tortoises cannot swim. They are a threatened species protected by Florida state law. Laws protect both the tortoise and its burrows. If you see these guys out and about, just leave them be. And if you found something and you're not sure whether it's a turtle or a tortoise, it's best just to leave it there because if you mistakenly pick up a tortoise and put it in the water thinking that it was a turtle, it will drown because they can't swim. It should also be noted that gopher tortoises must be relocated before any land clearing or development takes place. And property owners must obtain permits from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission before they can move them. Number four, these weird little things are called plaster bagworms. It's a little worm that lives in a case that will one day turn into a moth. You'll most often see them on the side of your house, on your mailbox, or maybe on a fence or even your garbage can if you keep that outside. They don't really do anything but sit on the side of your house and eat cobwebs. You can get them off by pressure washing, but you should know that the worm is very protected in that case and it could climb back up the wall. If you're really adamant about getting rid of them, you'll probably wanna transport it somewhere else. Number five. Baby bunnies and baby birds are everywhere in spring and early summer. Now I know whether you live up north or out west, everybody's got bunnies and birds. But I do see a lot of questions in our neighborhood groups about baby bunnies and baby birds in our area. If you see a baby bird hopping around in your grass, chances are that it's totally fine and it's just time for it to leave the nest, even if it can't fly yet. If you think the bird is too young to be out of its nest, you can try and put it back in its nest. But I almost guarantee you that that bird will probably jump right back out of the nest because this is exactly what happened to us. I saw a baby bird when I was walking my dog, thought it was way too young to be out of the nest because it could not fly. And we called the wildlife rescue and they told us to just put it back in its nest. We put it back in its nest and it continued to hop out of the nest. We later found out that it is a perfectly normal for a fledgling to leave its nest before it can fly. If mama bird is not already dive bombing you for being too close to her fledgling, she's probably nearby and will drop by with food. In terms of baby bunnies, if you find a baby bunny in your yard, it is not abandoned. Mama bunnies only come back about two times a day because they don't want to direct any attention from predators to their nest. They'll usually stop by in the very early morning hours or very late at night when there's nobody out and around. So you're not likely to see them dropping by. So as long as the baby bunnies are in an area where your animals can't get to them, just leave them be. Mama bunnies got it all under control. Number six, sandhill cranes are protected by the United States Migrated Bird Treaty and Florida's Endangered and Threatened Species Rule. It is illegal to feed sandhill cranes 
And if caught, you could expect to pay fees up to $5,000 and spend up to five years in prison. You can see these guys walking around parks, neighborhoods, and sometimes moseying across busy roads. If this happens to you, please just be patient. They will eventually get out of the road, but it's very important not to hit them. Sandhill cranes do mate for life and they have up to two babies per year. Anytime a Sandhill Crane's partner is injured or killed, it is absolutely devastating. So please just be careful. Number seven, gators, gators everywhere. If you see a body of water, it's safe to assume that there's a gator inside of it. It's important to keep young children and pets safe by keeping them a safe distance from the water's edge. It's also not recommended to go swimming in any body of water that you're uncertain of. Number eight, no see -ums, or sometimes they're called sand flies. If you go to the beach at dusk or sunrise, and you don't have any bug spray, be prepared to get eaten alive. These bugs are so small, you can't really see them, but they will bite the heck out of your ankles. Any bug spray that contains DEET will be effective, but do be aware that DEET can damage plastics, such as sunglasses and boat parts. Avon Skin So Soft is actually a great substitute if this is a concern. And finally, number nine, what to do if you find injured wildlife. You have several options. Your first option, and the one I most often take, is contacting Florida Wildlife Hospital. Florida Wildlife Hospital's number is 321-254-8843. They're located right up US 1. You can give them a call and leave a message and they will get back to you. If you find an injured animal after hours and you can safely capture them, you can bring them to the facility where they have a little drop box for all different sizes of animals. When you get there, they've got a couple of parking spaces. You pull in and there will be a little mailbox to the left. Inside that mailbox, there will be a little drop off form where you can fill out some information about the animal, where you found it and your contact information. Then you will place the animal that you have brought into one of the cages, depending on what size it is. And there's going to be a little tube where you can put the informational sheet that you just filled out. You can also contact Wild Florida Rescue at 321-821-7881 and someone may be able to come help you capture the injured animal. Lastly, you can try calling the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission at 888-404-3922. Most of these organizations are completely run by volunteers, so it's super important to be patient and be kind because they're dealing with a lot of animals. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.